if you look at this example here okay if you want to calculate range the formula for range is says difference between maximum and minimum value. so here the maximum value is 50 and the minimum value is 30 the range here is 20 okay so you can see you can calculate you can use a group b and group c examples also to calculate the range however the range is not a good measure of spread because it only focuses on the two extreme observation it doesn't give a good picture to the overall spread of the observation the second measure of spread is known as standard deviation standard deviation is the average distance of all the data points from the region. okay so let's do an example here so we have the data already here so if you want to calculate the standard deviation for this data standard deviation is the average distance from mean so if for this example the mean is 85 and you can see these values how these values are far from 85 so this value is little far these val this value is very far from 85 this value is a little bit near you see this value is very far this value is very very far from 85 so the, you see there's a lot of variation from the given data set so which means that there is there is an opportunity to improve the variance so let's calculate what is the standard deviation for this given data set. it's very simple you go to excel use the formula std ev okay let's try it again I just select stdv and i'll select the entire range I click enter so 42.5237 is the standard deviation here okay the higher the standard deviation is we would say there's more variation in the process the lesser the standard deviation is there is a very less variation Okay, so we should always aim for a less standard deviation. So these are certain examples. Um, I would request you to try this and you'd be able to calculate standard deviation on your own. Okay, let's move ahead. Now we are going to talk about the next measure of spread, which is called quartile. Quartile is something which where data can be divided into four different parts or four different regions that cover the entire range of the observed values. If we cut point for these regions are also known as quartiles. Quartile comes from quart. So Q1 is the one fourth item, Q2 is the two fourth item, okay, which is also known as medium, median, Q3 is the third fourth item, and Q4 is the large last item. Okay, so calculating quartile is very, very simple. So we will take this example to calculate quartiles. Okay, so let's say we have the same example. I want to calculate quartile. I can use it's very simple. I can use the formula quartile here. Okay. I am selecting the entire range. Since I want to calculate Q1 here, which is quartile one, I will use comma one, which is first quartile here. Okay and I close the bracket. So my quartile one is 41 here, okay? If I want to do quartile two, so I will quartile, I will use the entire data and use here two. So 92.5, so this is my Q1. This is my Q2, and I want to calculate Q3 here. It's very simple. I'm just using this formula and changing it to three here. To three here. So one zero three point five is my Q3, and if I want to do Q4 here. So 174 is my Q4, okay? So we have, this is my distribution as per the different quarters that I have, okay? 
So Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So in, in, a, in, a, in a given data set, we say that 50% of my data points are is between the minimum value and Q1, which is the minimum value here is uh, 36. So 36 to 41 is the 25%. 41 to 92.5 is the Q2, which is 50%. 92.5 to 103.5 is my 75%. And 103 to 70, 174 is my 100%. Okay, so these are my Q1. So 25% here and this 25%. So this is how the quartiles are being calculated. Okay, moving on. Okay, so we have covered the basic stats now. We have covered mean, median, mode, standard deviation, range, and quartiles. Now we are stepping into the five-step methodology, which is also known as a process improvement methodology. This five-step methodology starts from the define phase, uh, then move on to the measure phase, uh, analyze, improve, and control. Okay, so this is something which needs to be followed in terms of the five-step methodology. We will, we will be discussing this in detail in the upcoming sessions. Okay, let's take that analogy to understand something very, very interesting that is coming up. So let's take this example. A man wants to reach his workplace by 6.55 a.m., but he's unable to do so exactly at 6.55 a.m. every day. Sometime he reaches earlier, but almost never before 6.50. Sometime he reaches later, but almost never after 6, 7 a.m. So he's reaching office between 6.50 to 7, okay? But his office time is 6.55. So he's sometimes five minutes late, five minutes early, but he's never reached beyond 7, and he never reached before 6.50, okay? This is because of a certain factors which affects the time he takes. He cannot control. It is very, very random. He cannot reach to office accurately at 6.55 every day. Because the traffic he encounters under normal course of travel, the variation that occurs due to these kind of factors is also called inherent variation or common cause variation. Reaching office five minutes here and there is a common cause variation because there are, there are certain factors which cannot be controlled, which would come for sure. And that's why it is called the common cause variation because it's an inherent variability. Okay, so uh, it should be the aim value should be between the maximum deviation and the minimum deviation, which is quite accepted. Let's take another example. Today he's he's reached early. He's reached at six thirty, probably because his watch was running fast, because he got a ride, his bus driver took a shortcut he stayed over at a friend's nearby he had some important work to be finished before 7 okay these causes are characteristic of a specific circumstances and do not occur in the normal scheme of actions okay variation due to this type of reason is called assignable or special causes today is late again why he reaches office at 7:20 because he overslept, he missed the bus, the bus driver was new and took some other route, he stayed over at friends far away. These causes are characteristic of a specific circumstance that do not occur in the normal scheme of action. Again, variation due to these type of reason is called assignable or special cause variation. So the entire analogy was shown you to make you understand that there are two types of variation when we are doing Six Sigma implementation or when we're doing Six Sigma projects. One is called the common cause and another is called the special cause. Common cause of variation, it always present. It is expected normally. There are a lot of causes, each with very little effect. It is difficult to identify and little difficult to eliminate. However, if it's a special cause, it is not always present. It's an unexpected, it is not normal. Uh, 
there are few very few causes which leads to special causes very few with large effect it is very easy to identify and very easy to eliminate. okay now we will be talk about different ways to comment a project okay first is called voc which is voice of customer on this particular slide we're going to talk about what are the different ways or different trigger points which lead us to comment a project the first one is a customer complaints under voc and the second is customer escalation all these all these trigger comes from voc second way to comment a project is called voice of business Okay. Voice of business is also called as POV. The first is attrition, absenteeism, cycle time reduction, repeated errors. All these are voice of business, voice of stakeholder, voice of CEO, voice of CFO, because they really want to improve these business metrics. It is not something which has come from the customer. It has come from the business. The third way to commence a project is using COPQ. which is known as cost of poor quality which mean that there are a lot of reworks happen and to do to do that rework the employees have to work again and if they have to work again they have to put in a lot of time and the time is equal to money okay so that's a cost which is being incurred extra for that we can improve we can do projects on improving achieving the right first time to improve the poor act. then there is another way to commence a project which is known as rty which is rule throughput yield rule throughput yield is when one process act as input for another process okay when there are three four different department which are interrelated to each other when output of one becomes the input of another and in and so and so forth and in that case if there is a process wherein the rule throughput yield is very low wherein the final product which is given to the customer has some issues in that particular case we would try to improve the role through put and last but not the least which is first time right which is to improve the output of just one process instead of concentrating at a series of processes so which focuses on that if i work on this one particular process my entire value chain will so that's how with these are the trigger points which help us to comments a six sigma project that's why it says time to start now now we get into the defined phase of six sigma 